Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulu. Today our guest is Marini De Levera and today she is going to speak about her work which is involved children and also our legal system. Marini, I got to know you as a lawyer, yes. as a lecturer, yes. but you are beyond that now. Yes. If you can tell your story, like you know, what you are doing and all that, that yes. would help our audience. Uh, last year, till last year, I was the chairperson of the National Child Protection Authority. Then since August uh, 2018, I have started my own law firm, that is the Law Chambers of Marini Di Rivera and Sisters at Law, a civil society organization that works for women and children. So, since it is very difficult to register uh, an organization. I could not get funding when I started Sisters at Law. So it was through what I earned from my law chambers that I funded my organization. And I have been carrying on with lots of energetic, enthusiastic young volunteers. We appear in the children's courts, we give legal advice, we do a lot of work at grassroots level, we rescue orphans from orphanages and we uh, connect them with their parents and enable them to live happy lives. When you say you are rescuing children from orphanage, because that's something I always say that orphanage sometimes in Sri Lanka is not safe. Yes. What do you really mean by that? I'm sorry to say, when I was the chairperson as the National Child Protection Authority, I had the opportunity of visiting several orphanages and I saw a lot of physical abuse, sexual abuse and emotional abuse in these orphanages. Some of the younger teenage girls I strongly suspected were being trafficked and I started investigations but unfortunately I could not finish. <laughs> yes, that's something because I have been speaking up. So from lecturing from a lawyer what, and you got an appointment on the, the, then you suddenly start a civil organization. What was the reason for you to be start this uh, civil organization and start a movement for children? I felt that the child protection authority uh, mechanisms in Sri Lanka were not strong enough to protect the children uh, who are suffering abuse, all kinds of violence in Sri Lanka. So that means the children who have been rescued from homes also getting into another issue then they are being safe. But your system, how it will help the children to be safe? Because we are always available, unlike the government system that says, oh, we can't do that, there is red tape, you cannot meet, meet the person in charge, we are always there for them. In fact, when I appear in the children's court for one case, there are people from so many other cases, uh, and some people who don't, do not have lawyers, who approach me and say, please do something on our behalf. And we give legal advice, we support them, we find them houses, we do all kinds of things. So finding them. houses now, uh, because I remember one person came and said, Marini is doing something like that. So when I didn't know it was you, so I asked what, and said, you know, it's not just you put a child to orphanage, but you uh, ensure that they live with parents or with the family. But if that per child is being abused by the family, how the safe environment you are making? Uh, if, if the family is abusing the child, then you have to take the child out. Okay. But before putting the child into an orphanage, you'll have to find out uh, whether there is extended family. So okay. if the child is suffering with the mother and father, sadly there are cases like that, yeah. where the child is abused by the mother and father. Then you uh, find out whether the child has aunts or uncles or uh, grandparents to look after the child. You should send a child to an orphanage only as a last resort. As a last. So after you give in to an extended family, is there a mechanism, because that is something I have been accusing the child authority, that after a child being given or off, orphanage or being released from court, there is no mechanism to follow it up with the, the, they are being safe or there will be no abuse or the child being treated well. Is there a mechanism that you are introducing? 
the probation department has been doing it all this time but I am not very happy at the way that they are doing it. Uh, they are very colonial and very rigid and uh, not like in other countries where, where, where they ask the child himself or herself whether the child is happy or they have an effective monitoring system where the school teacher uh, observes the child. And there are lots of graduates at grassroots level. Every divisional secretariat has about yeah. 16 graduates, women development officer, child protection officer, name it, and, and they are there. But they are all seated behind desks not doing anything. They don't have the training, they, they don't have the passion, they don't have uh, the drive. Yes. Uh, Tell me about do, it. <laughs> to do what they have to do. So it's a shame. All these people are paid with the taxpayers' money, but they are just left there. And the children are suffering on one side, and those people are there on one another. So nothing has been done to build bridges between the two. So uh, what I see is, uh, with my experience working with children, there's no the chil the child itself has no awareness about what going to play because if something happened they do not go and tell anyone. It's a scary. But if we are, there have been an awareness for a child to be protect himself, whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, whether it's your family member, that would really help. So the awareness is something that yeah. we have to make. Yeah. Easy organization yes. is doing that. Yes, in fact, I wrote this book, Bindu Bird. Uh, okay. This little bird comes and explains to, the, to a child who's been emotionally abused on how she should look after herself. This was made into a street drama and my law students acted in this street drama and took it all over Sri Lanka. We went to Mahavilachya, we went to Vaunia, we went to Anuradhapura, all over teaching little children how they should look after themselves and if they were having a problem, how to alert other people, not to stay in a place where there is no one. If something happens, if you feel uncomfortable, shout and always, always t come home and tell your mother what happened during the day. So with all this work, you won an award. Yes. Right? I saw the being recognized. Yes. What that award, what, what was that award and how it made you, uh, your work, like you, as you said, you, I remember you called, when you started it, yeah, you yeah. called me and said, I'm starting it, yeah. can you help me out? I yeah, said, yes. yeah, you started yes. So, what this award is about? This award was given by the US Secretary of State uh, to 10 outstanding women in the world. It is the International Woman of Courage Award. Women who had gone out of their way at tremendous personal cost, uh, professional cost to make a difference. And I met nine other women. I could not have done this by myself. I got tremendous support from my family, especially from my husband, who is the present Attorney General yes, of Sri Lanka, yes. and my son and daughter. Because this is something I built up during the last 30 years. The award came only now. But when my children were babies, my husband looked after them. And when my daughter was doing her O-levels, I was invited for two weeks to Calcutta for a peace training. He said, you better go for that training. I'll stay behind and look after the daughter and see that she goes for her examination. So that kind of support enabled me to go all out and help others. I, I didn't have to bother and think, oh, what will ha happen to my children? You know, there was give and take in our marriage. Mm -hmm. He was a tower of strength. Uh, we worked as a team. Even now, when I have a case, I always consult with him. And he says, you know, you can look at this point. Uh, you can bring this issue up. And even in his work, I, I, I give him a lot of support. So that kind of uh, family support is very vital for women. Uh, to go out into society and identify the problems in society and find solutions. You have a very strong background. I know you are. Yeah. You have a husband who's attorney general. You are from a law background <laughs> and you have been associating with a lot of I because I see you at uh, cocktails yeah. and all that. That background is something that is, I think, blessed not for you, for people who are underprivileged, for children. Yes. And, and I'm honored to say this, that you are, you are really using that for the real people. Yeah. How do you want to change this, the lives of the children in the future? Because now, at the moment, yeah. our children 
yeah. are being ruined yes. by our own people in our own eyes. You are right. Yes, I how, agree. How with you, you see the future of our children? Uh, Nelson Mandela made this very interesting statement that you judge a society on how they treat their children, and I, I think that is very vital. It's very sad that in Sri Lanka that we don't have a strong child protection mechanism. First of all, there should be a complaint mechanism mm -hmm. where a neighbor or an aunt or a school teacher can complain and instantly remedial action is taken. We don't have that. We should have, uh, uh, we should have volunteers, we should have community workers who are committed uh, for the welfare of children. Now while I was in the USA to receive this award, uh, I was taken around for two weeks and given training. Now even when a child goes to court, there are people to support the child because the court experience is a very formidable, scary experience for the child. So there is someone to say, okay, don't worry, this is what is going to happen. The judge will ask you some questions. It's okay if you are, there's no right or wrong answer. You say what you feel. So they put the child at ease. That is just one thing. Then I, I was taken to another place where children can't catch up with the others where a child is very good at art, very good in English, but very weak in maths. There was an organization, after school organization that takes the child out and does maths in a fun way. So we don't have such support systems for the children. And also children's views are not taken into account. Yeah, that I agree. Yeah. Now, my, both my son and daughter sometimes even boss over me because from the time they were little, I used to say, uh, we are going to Beirut for the holiday, why don't you? Then my daughter used to say, no, I would love to go to Jaffna because it's after the war and I would like to see it. And we used to say, why we can't do that? Or, or we used to allow them to be yeah. decision makers. But very often what we see is that parents and other superiors use children as shuttle, not as right holders. They also have human rights. They have a right to communicate. They have the right to express their views. They have a right to decide what subjects they want to select for the A-level, what they want to do when they grow up. But here they are suppressed, even with regard to the partner in life, uh, yeah. they, they are not allowed to make their own decision. When you say I agree on that, I also have that same issue with my kids <laughs> because they speak out. Yeah. You know, there was one of one of business leading business lady who always very passionate about children. So she always said, Sulochana, I want to help the management of this child uh, orphanage to do things properly. We don't want to take over, but we want to help the management. Yeah. But whenever we go and speak, they said, No, you cannot do that. Yeah. So the we didn't ask anything, we didn't ask for partner, we said we want to give counsellors for our homes, yeah, we fantastic. wanted to come and say how to manage it, we want to uh, share the children, give them a vision, yeah, just not the, them to pass the exam yeah. because uh, they often have, to have dreams, dreams. Yeah. and they, are, they should not think that they are the, like orphans, yeah. they have to. So, But it has been blocked from the legal system itself. Yes. Right. So yeah. we have been like, no, we, we actually, she's a very genuine person and she's yeah. no, non, I can tell her, she's Shahara Jawardana. Yeah. And she actually, after that, she actually built a um, building for Paliagoda police yeah. to, in, to, have, to handle cases of children privately. Yeah. And she spent nearly five million to build that yeah. because she said, if I'm not allowed to do anything uh, rather than help in the orphanage, I at least I'll do something for that. Why is this system, this legal system yeah. is not helping? And I don't see lawyers itself are trying to change the uh, old laws in Sri Lanka. Yes. Why is this? Yes. As you said, the laws are very archaic, very old. We, we, we are retaining what we had during colonial times. The British have abandoned those 19th, 18th century laws, but still we are clinging on to them. In fact, the word probation means that a child is being tested or punished. In, in orphanages, child offenders and child victims are put under the same roof. So a child who has committed crime 
is very aggressive and a child victim is someone who has suffered violence. So when you put the two sets together, it can be very dangerous. So no one is reviewing the law. And I'm sorry to say, like in countries like UK, the law commission has to be really proactive and, and, and look at all these archaic laws and, and look at other countries. All other countries are moving towards uh, foster care, alternative care. There, there are so many different models to uh, select from. India itself has started her own alternative care policy. But still we are having this old, colonial, rigid, archaic orphanage system where children are like put into prison and they are sent to school, brought back, very regimented, very Sri Lanka life. has many female lawyers. Yes. Our uh, law college has more female yeah. students. Yes, there are lots of Right, out. they come out and they get a job and they settle. Yeah. Why can't our females, because they feel, yes. why are they are not coming out and trying to change our law for the future of our children? Why you think yes. there's no voice coming from the yes. female lawyers? First of all, I have to blame the legal education system in this country. It, it's memorizing, parroting and regurgitating uh, it. You know, uh, there, there is no uh, practical aspect introduced like like work experience to go into an orphanage and find uh, what human rights are violated of these children that there, there, there is no such provision in the legal education system they are given a textbook to read uh, two pages then you come and, and, and you and you either answer a question or a viva so uh, children or law students are not made sensitive to the problems of other people and they don't develop empathy those soft skills are not given to these people and also uh, research skills are not developed they're, they're, they are not allowed to argue to debate they, they may attend a formal debate but in class you cannot now when i was a lecturer i used to say i'm very happy if one of my students say i don't agree with you and and, and say on on what aspect and, and then have have a discussion with me in class without taking down everything I say or say I have read something different. People are not uh, taught to be critical thinkers. Yeah. Yeah. If a child become critical, she's a misbehaved child. Child. So we need critical thinkers. Those are the real leaders who, who will break down these orphanages who are that are so militarized, you know, uh, restricting yeah. a child's growth and development and taking these children out where they are loved and cared for and where they can grow and realize their dreams. Agree with you. Thank you so much because you're so passionate about it <laughs> and it's coming from from your whole self yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm happy and I'm, I've been knowing you yes. from my son actually my yeah. son used to speak about it. so thank you so much for being honest genuinely speaking about our children our country children yeah. and for your service thank you there is a cup next to you and a yeah. pen if you can put a, your name and signature yeah. and leave it here that yeah. would be yeah. great help thank you very much Sula it was a delight talking thank to you thank you so much there's a small gift also oh, thank uh, you. and a slogan a cup with a slogan of Plenty with Sulo, oh, so love. when you drink I'll, your tea, I'll, you will always I'll remember. I'll treasure that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you again. Thank and, you. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed our session. Very much. Yes. <laughs> okay. It was lovely talking to you. Today we had Marini de Livera. She spoke about our children. She said, children need to be treated as another human being. They also have rights. And also she said, we have to change our old laws. It's responsibility of ours. Be tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plenty with Sulu. Thank you. Be safe. <laughs>